Hey y'all, uh, I'm Travis Devon, and this is the second video in our series on Pro Tools for Filmmakers and Content Creators. Uh, we're going to open up a session here and get started at taking a look at some of the editing tools available to us in Pro Tools uh, that you'll use most commonly. All right, so here we are with the second video in our series, and this video will discuss the basic editing tools available to us in Pro Tools and how those relate to editing speech or dialogue that you may find yourself editing for a short film interview or a podcast or a voiceover for an advertisement or any type of branded content. Uh, we're also going to discuss how to use these tools as well for some basic sound effects editing uh, for any sound effects that you may record. So this session should be included with, with the files along with this video. Uh, that'll include the Pro Tools session, as well as these two audio files that we have here. And there'll be multiple ways for you to open that up. You should be able to open up the Pro Tools session. If you're working in a different set, in a different version of Pro Tools than me, you may have to just ignore a dialog box that says, hey, this was opened up in a different version. If for some reason you cannot open up the Pro Tools session, uh, you'll come up here in the left-hand corner and click on File, and then navigate to import session data and then included with the files that i'm going to give you i'm also going to to provide you with a aaf file uh, that's called my first aaf and you'll click on that you'll open that and it's going to have you'll see these options for two tracks there and you'll click import uh, you'll want to copy the audio from from source media and there's no video, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, when you do that, two new tracks will pop up in your session. And in one second, you'll see those populate. And then those, those audio files will, will come into your, your Pro Tools session. I'm going to delete these for now because we don't need them. And let's start talking about the editing tools available to us in Pro Tools. So right now, I have the Smart Tool selected, but let's start with some, some other options. So first, uh, we're going to come up to this toolbar here in the top left and click on just one of these. So here, this is the Trim Tool. And what the Trim Tool does, notice how my cursor for my mouse changes um, depending on where I am on this clip. What the Trim Tool will do is it'll allow you to take clips that are on your timeline and trim the ends of them. Trim this down like that. If there is some part of your file that's larger, uh, it'll also let you extend those frame handles out. Another tool that we have here is the selector tool. And what the selector tool will do is allow you to select specific places on your timeline. Uh, notice how my playhead moves with my selector tool, where if I want it to play from a certain point, I can click there on my Pro Tools timeline. You can click either on your tracks in the session or up here as well in your ruler. What our selector tool will also do if we click and hold is select certain portions of our audio uh, that we can edit. Um, so I could make a quick edit here, which in Pro Tools, Command E for edit or Control E on PC will split that region for us and create, create a new clip. I'm going to undo that. Uh, you can also press backspace, and it will delete that. This next tool that we have here is the grabber tool. This will change your cursor to this hand shape. And what this will allow you to do is grab this and move it around. So you can move clips around on the timeline. Up here, you'll notice that we have a bar connecting all of these. Uh, and that's the tool that I like to use most. It's called the Smart Tool. Uh, and what happens with the Smart Tool is depending on where your cursor is on the clip, it will change the function of what your, your mouse does. So right now, if I'm at the top half of this clip, this becomes the Selector Tool. and it allows me to select certain regions of this clip. If I come to the bottom half of this clip, it will turn into the Grabber Tool and let me move this around. Uh, if I come to the ends, it turns into my trim tool, and then I can trim my clip. And 
one of my favorite features of this is if I come to one of the top corners, it lets me draw a fade right in on top of my clip. Uh, some people don't like this smart tool all the time because if they work with their timelines with their audio in, in smaller tracks, it's kind of difficult to determine between uh, whether you're going to be in the top half or the bottom half of the clip. Um, when, when editing specific audio, though, I sometimes blow up my tracks a little bit, and I find the, the smart tool to be a very fast way to use it. Uh, one other tool that, that might be nice to mention here is the scrub tool, which will allow us to come onto our audio and play it back. Trim tool, the selection tool, and the grabber tool. Uh, and then my favorite is the smart tool. So you can play back specific sections by clicking and dragging. Can also go in. Can also go in reverse as well. Uh, the pencil tool you do not need to worry about right now. That's used for uh, either writing an automation or certain very specific uh, functions that aren't relevant to what we're doing right now. So, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to remain in the smart tool. Uh, that's how I prefer working, and we'll start working with with this audio. Uh, however, before we really dive into this, I want to talk about how how to work with this in different edit modes that we have. Up here, you'll see four different buttons that you can click on. Right here is grid. So if I select my grabber tool in grid mode, uh, what'll happen? Let me set my grid to a larger value so you can see this easier. We'll set that to one second. And you'll notice how the blue bars for my grid changed. Uh, this will snap to these seconds. I'm going to extend my screen horizontally. Um, you can extend your screen horizontally by pressing the plus or minus button down here. There's also a couple of different shortcuts that you can look up to do that as well. In grid mode, my clip will snap to the grid. Uh, the other thing, the other mode that you'll use most often is slip mode. And you'll notice in slip mode, my clip does not snap to the grid. I can move it very specifically. You'll have to choose between these two modes at some point. I like staying in grid mode. And then if I have to get, do finer detail or get very specific with something, I'll switch to editing in slip mode. Uh, however, I work with my grid uh, fairly frequently set to frames for working in film. Uh, so my, my actual grid size is, is fairly small most of the time. Uh, you may prefer to work in slip mode and use a larger grid. The other two modes that we have up here are spot and shuffle. Let's start with spot. Uh, spot, what happens when you use spot mode, it lets you move clips to very specific places on your timeline. So if I click this clip, instead of being able to drag it, it gives me a spot dialog box. And what this will let you do is move clips or whole groups of clips very specifically. So if I just want to move this two seconds over, I can select that there and make it that's where it's starting now. I can make it start at hour one, minute zero, second two instead of second zero. And I click OK, and it moves it over by two seconds. Up here is shuffle mode. Uh, shuffle is in red for good reason, um, because shuffle turns your timeline into a destructive timeline. And anything that you you move around in here will affect other clips. So right now, you'll notice that I'm not really able to move this clip to specific locations. It just snaps. Uh, where shuffle mode is, is used more often is for editing out specific things and having, having your, your tape or your, your recording uh, just come right back onto itself. It, it's as if you were to cut a section out of, out of tape or film and then join the other two sections. So watch what happens when I do this. When I select a, 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 a section of my clip with the selector tool and then press backspace, immediately the other portion of my clip comes to join this. Now, something to keep in mind is when you do this, everything else in your timeline on this track down, down the way will also move. Uh, so when editing for film, uh, shuffle mode can be very, very scary, and you, you don't want to use it uh, 
if if you're going to throw a lot of stuff down the line out of sync. Uh, where where shuffle mode can be used effectively is editing something that does not have to be synced to picture, uh, like a podcast or, or a specific voiceover. I'm going to undo what I did and come back to grid mode so that we can work in grid mode. Some other tools that you may find uh, useful are cut, copy, and paste. Uh, and the, the functions for those, the shortcut keys and Pro Tools, are similar to what they would be in any other program. So I can come here, I can press Command-C for copy, and then Command-V and paste it in a location. Uh, Control-C or Control-V will work on a PC. Uh, you can also cut, Control-X, that cuts it out, and then Control-V. We'll paste that. Let me undo what I just did. Cut, copy, and paste, two of the most, or three of the most useful things that you'll actually do when editing uh, dialogue for, for film or any other type of creative content or media that you're creating. In addition to that, I want to talk about fades real quick. So with my smart tool, I can come up here and drag in fades. If you're not working with the smart tool, uh, there's a couple of different shortcuts that you can choose. Um, but one of the more easy ways of doing this is highlighting a region, selecting where you, you want your, your fade to be, and then pressing Command or Control F on PC. And you'll get a fade dialog box, and you can choose exactly how you want your fade to be. You press OK, and it draws in a fade there. All right, so let's actually practice uh, editing this small bit of dialogue that I have recorded here for this, this session. Uh, if you'd like to follow along in your own sessions, I highly recommend you do that, uh, or do this at another time, uh, just so you can get a feel for, for editing a clip in, in Pro Tools. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select this clip, oh, come back to my Smart Tool, and I'm going to press Play, so space bar on my computer. This is a quick test recording uh, so that we can play around with our editing tools in Pro Tools. Uh, we can play around with the trim tool, the selection tool, and the grabber tool. Uh, and then my favorite is the smart tool, although some people absolutely hate the smart tool. Uh, so that'll be that. And I think there's a couple of ums and ahs in here that we'll, we'll try to remove. Um, another good exercise for you guys that I'll include in this file as well is uh, me counting from 1 to 10. And you guys can try to either remove all the odd numbers or all the even numbers. So let me just give you a second real quick. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You might have to remove that and too. <laughs> uh, so that includes my, my, that concludes my test recording. All right, so there's our test recording. And to get started editing this out, uh, let's, let's play around with the exercise that I mentioned in the latter half of this clip, which is going to be taking all the odd numbers out of my count from one to 10. Uh, so to do that, Let's, let's take a look at our clip. I have a lot of the clip that I'm not going to use. I remember listening to this, so looking at my waveform that's displayed to me right here, I can, I can clearly see that this region right here is where I counted from 1 to 10, because I have these little spikes in the waveform for where I would have actually counted those numbers out, as opposed to just talking, uh, which looks like this in the waveform. As you get more experienced with this, you'll, you'll gain uh, more knowledge about just sort of reading the waveform and, and memorizing what, what that looked like in comparison to what you were hearing uh, so you can figure things out. So I'm going to trim this clip down to a, a smaller workable size. So using my trim tool, coming to the edge here, I'm just going to trim this down to here. And then I know it probably ended somewhere around here. I'm not quite positive. But I definitely know that this section here is what I don't need. So I'll trim that down there. And if I'm actually going to be chopping this up, this isn't a lot of room for me to work with, and I might want to expand my workspace. Uh, so you can expand your workspace horizontally by pressing these buttons down here, 
so that plus. Uh, you can also do this on your keyboard uh, by pressing R and T. So T will go out, and then R brings that in. If R and T on your keyboard do not work, what you can, you can also try is pressing Control or Command, Command on Mac and Control on PC, and then the brackets in the, the top right-hand corner of your keyboard uh, for adjusting that horizontal size. Uh, for now, I'll just use R and T, and I actually I have R and T mapped to a specific to two specific buttons on my mouse uh, to do this a little faster. So everybody's got a bit of a different workflow, and Pro Tools is sort of notorious for having multiple different shortcuts for for different things. So let me expand this a little bit so I can see these numbers just a little bit better, or these individual waveforms. So I'm gonna play this clip back from the beginning, and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, what we want to do with this clip now that we have expanded it is to cut out all the odd numbers. So, let's listen to this clip from the beginning. And one. So, we don't need that and one. So we'll, we'll trim that down. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. So what I can do is select this region where three is on my clip and just press backspace and get rid of that. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, two, four, five. And we'll get rid of five and six, seven. All the other odd numbers. Eight, nine, nine and 10. I don't need that nine and I definitely don't need that and. So we'll get rid of those. So right now, if I were to play this from here, two, four, six, eight, ten. But now we have these pesky spaces in between all of these. And something that we can do is just in grid mode, drag these over. And you can drag your clips around here. And now we don't have that. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm just going to adjust this real quick because I don't like the timing of eight and I don't like the timing of ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten, two, four, six, eight, ten. Eight, two, four, six, eight, ten. Kind of come right on top of that ten. I'm not going to get too nitpicky with this, uh, but what we want to do here is not leave these spaces uh, right here in between. Right now we have these clips right up against each other, and you may not hear it here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Let me see if I can force a pop to happen. Two, four. So that little sort of pop that you get at the end of me saying four uh, is is not preferable, and with a lot of lower frequency content, so something lower than my voice, you'll actually get a very specific pop on your speakers from having a waveform end abruptly like that. So what you want to do is between 
these little edits that we've made is create a crossfade. So we can do that by using our fade dialog. using my selector tool, and then command F, and it'll give us a crossfade dialog. Uh, but what we can also do is if we're using the smart tool, remember how in the top left corner or the top right corner, we get a little fade tool. If we come to the bottom between these two clips, we also get a fade tool in the smart tool. Uh, which you'll find useful. You can draw in little crossfades there. Two, four, six, eight, ten. To ensure that your audio goes smoothly between different clips. Uh, and let's put little fades on the end just to make those happy. Two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is do a whole bunch of undos real fast. And let's say we didn't want to actually do all the work that we just did where we are dragging those clips around. We're not syncing this audio to anything right now. It's not synced to picture. Uh, so one of the tools that we can use, let me show you how shuffle mode works. So in shuffle mode, this is this is a good demo of what shuffle mode can do. And one. So that and, I don't need that. I'll take my trim tool, I'll trim my clip there. You notice how it comes to the same spot uh, in, in my timeline. So if you're savvy, you can use that to, to good effect. But where shuffle mode will really come in handy is removing these numbers fast and putting all our clips together easily. One, two. So I want all of the odd numbers this time. Let's get rid of this two. Three, four, five, this one will be six. One, three, five, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We don't want eight, and we don't want ten because it's an even number. And you'll notice that shuffle mode just slammed all these clips right together. Uh, and that, that can be very useful for certain editing workflows. Now, if you don't want to draw those fades in individually, what you can also do is select all these regions at once. I just selected multiple regions, by the way, by clicking the grabber tool on one of them, holding shift, and selecting the others down the line. Uh, many other programs will function like that as well. Uh, and then pressing Command F for our fade dialog. And here, what's what this is going to let us do is actually pick all of our fades that we want. So you can do what we call batch fades and add them all at once. Uh, 83 milliseconds. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go with that for now. Uh, you'll notice that the fades are quite small, but it's not super important that they be long. Uh, a lot of times smaller is better when trying to avoid uh, different artifacts between different different clips. Nine. So that's another way to, to use all of those tools. So leaving this alone right now, I'm going to be sure to come back into grid mode. That's the one issue with shuffle mode, is you'll leave, you'll do something, one task in shuffle mode on one track. And then you'll come to another track and you'll inadvertently make a mistake and move everything in the timeline. Pro Tools has undo though, so you can always control Z and get out of there. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm gonna press Command S or Control S on PC or save to save my session. Uh, you should save more frequently than I just did uh, to, to be happy. Every, every time you think of it or move from one task to another, Press, press Command S. It's something that I do pretty frequently. And down here, I have some sound effects that I've edited, or I've recorded and are unedited. We're going to do a little bit of editing for them. So this is a keyboard that I've edited. This is a keyboard that I recorded.
This is going to be a recording of um, an old iMac keyboard. So you can hear some typing there. And you'll notice that it's slightly quieter than the voiceover that we used. Uh, this was a quieter source that we were recording. And uh, a lot of times you don't want to record super loud with certain sound effects in case something ends up becoming louder than you expect. Uh, you want to leave yourself plenty of headroom. And this is a recording where I had plenty of headroom available. For now, let's just focus on this section of typing. So with this sound effect that we recorded, this table, or this, with the sound effect that we recorded, this keyboard, you'll notice that it's a little quieter uh, than the other voiceover that we had recorded. Uh, that's, that's just the nature of how it was recorded. And you'll notice this with a lot of uh, actual location audio that comes off of, off of most film sets, uh, because you're not really trying to, to push those boundaries too much. You want to leave yourself enough headroom when recording sound effects or in, in an uncontrolled environment that you don't accidentally distort your audio. Uh, you can always add what we call digital gain later. And one of the ways to do this in Pro Tools, if this is a little quiet for you right now, this is gonna be a recording of, um, an old... and looking on my meter here, it might be a little quiet. Uh, if I come to my mix window and press command equal sign or control equal sign, I have some meters here, and if I press play, this is going to be a recording of um, an old iMac keyboard. You'll see zero here. And then minus 20 here. So because of the nature of, of this, what we're recording, because it's a little bit more transient and not as much of a sustained sound as my voice, uh, what you'll notice uh, is that it, it sounds a little bit quieter. And we can add a little bit of digital gain to this if we want. Uh, now, the fun thing about Pro Tools and digital gain is that it doesn't actually add noise uh, to, to your recording. Uh, the noise floor will get louder because it's already there on the, the clip that you've recorded, uh, but it won't add anything. So we can we can give it a little bit. And then there's this little uh, clip gain meter down here that we can click and drag. So that seems a bit nicer. I like to just look at my meters here and see that bouncing right as soon as it gets into the bright green. That's normally a comfortable range uh, to be gain staging in Pro Tools. Um, most of your audio and your clips, you'll want to gain stage right around this minus 20. Uh, the reason for that is because it's, it's analogous to where zero would be on an old VU meter. Uh, and a lot of the processing that Pro Tools does, as well as a lot of the processing that a lot of the plugins that you may use in Pro Tools, that's the sweet spot that they're designed for, is right around that zero on the, the VU meter or minus 20 digitally. Uh, another reason that we'll want to sort of keep that around minus 20, even though it may seem a little quiet at first compared to everything that we, we consume media-wise, is because once you throw a lot of clips and a lot of tracks together, what you don't want to do is overload your, your ultimate master bus. And if you have a lot of stuff that you make louder, uh, the combined effects of all those little clips that you made really loud uh, will overload your, your master bus at the, the end of what you're, you're doing, and you won't have a good time. Everything that you're doing will be way too loud. So gain stage everything at like minus 20 and then bring things up from there afterwards. I find that to be a good practice. So right now I just brought this up just a tiny bit. And I'm going to remove this verbal slate that I stuck at the beginning.
So I don't really like these, these couple of clacks at the beginning. It doesn't sound very good for our sound effects, so let's just trim those out. And I can tell that my typing will change here. So let's split that for now. And I'll save this for later. So I'll just split it by pressing Command E and drag that off there so I can work with this section later. All right, so that was. So that's me speaking. We don't want that. Let's come there. And then I'm going to draw a little fade on each end of this. Oh, there's a little bit of my voice there. So we're going to have to make that fade a little bit earlier. So let's, let's put that in there. I don't like that either. I don't like actually hearing it fade out at the end. So I'm just going to make a shorter fade. There we go. And this could be our sound effect. Now in Pro Tools, I could also rename this. I can double click on this clip and then name it Keyboard Typing. So I know where to find it later. And in my clip list over here off to the right, if I open up my clip list, you'll see Keyboard Typing. And if I click on that clip, it actually selects that clip in here in my timeline. So before we close this video out, uh, what I'd like you all to try on your own is come to the spoken part at the beginning of this voiceover that I have. Uh, I'm not really going to do it in the video for the sake of, of time. And try to edit out some of these individual little ums and ahs and ands uh, when you can. This is a quick test recording uh, so that we can play around with our editing tools in Pro Tools. Uh, we can play around with the... So just that very first section, we've already got a couple of things that we can, we can deal with. This is a quick test recording uh, so that we can play around with our editing tool. Like that. We don't like that there. There's a little... So let's get rid of that. Uh, so that we can play around with our editing tools in Pro Tools. And you'll notice that there's there's an empty space here now. Uh, so that we can play around with our editing tools in Pro Tools. Uh, we can play around with the trim tool, the selection tool, and the grabber tool. Uh, and then my favorite is the smart tool, although some people absolutely hate. So the sound just goes to nothing there, uh, which a lot of people don't, don't like. You'll notice that. And that's where uh, room tone comes in handy. Uh, so we could mess around with this a little bit since this isn't synced up to anything in particular. This is a, we can play around with our that we can play around with our edit. But the way I say that last word and then hit play around with, hmm, maybe we don't we don't want those to be so close together. So we'll space them out just a tiny bit so that we can play around with our editing tools. That sounds a little bit better. Uh, so that we can play around with our editing tools in Pro Tools. Uh, we can play around with the bird tool. Uh, and then my favorite is the smart tool. Although some people absolutely hate the smart tool. Uh, so that'll be that. And I think there's a couple of ums and ahs in here that we'll, we'll try to remove. Um, another is 
uh, me counting from 1 to 10, and you guys can try to either remove all the odd numbers or all the even numbers. So let me just give you a second. And... Ah, so right here at the end, what I just spent time looking for in here was some room tone that I can fill that space with. Uh, a lot of times you'll be provided room tone separately, but sometimes you aren't. A lot of production environments and demands from production environments don't allow you to really record uh, room tone as easily as one would like or would imagine as possible. So what we can actually do is we can take this from other sections, and this is where I mentioned cut, copy, and paste being some of the most valuable tools that you have at your disposal. And 10. You might have to... Oh, there's a little bit of me swallowing there. That's That's not good. And one, two, three. Ah, so it seems like there's some, some good room tone here. I'm going to Command C, and then I can paste this. Uh, but I don't want it to take up the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is just select the region where I want it, and then I'll do Command Alt V, uh, or Control Alt V. Uh, on, a, on a PC to have what I copied fill only the region that I selected. There we go. There's my room tone. I'm going to add little crossfades on that. And now we just bridged a little gap between there using just cut, copy, and paste uh, so that we can play around with our editing tools in Pro Tools. Uh, we can play around with the... This is a quick test recording. Uh, so that we can play. So what I'd like you, you all to do in your, your free time is experiment with this uh, recording that I made here and see if there's any little ums and ahs that you can remove. Or if you really want to uh, do something fun, take the words that I say and, and rearrange them to sound like something else. Uh, have, have fun with it on your own. Um, that's, that's the best way to, to do this and, and learn more of this is take this, chop it up, and do some more with it. Uh, so that being said, that's that's our last video, or our last video. Uh, all that being said, this was our second video uh, for Pro Tools for content creators and filmmakers. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and stay tuned for the next video.